What's up guys, it's Timmy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to install the Paragon Spiral Staircase System. And uh, it's not as crazy as you think, you can totally do it, so let's get to it. This is my next project. <laughs> oh, we got Max down here today. Come down to help in the project. Yeah. And uh, it was supposed to be not pissing rain and we're, we're gonna install that rooftop deck today, which would've been really exciting, but we're gonna do something else really cool, maybe cooler. Step one, we have to get the Spiral Staircase pole, or center column up to the roof to put down into the tower. So let's do that. And luckily, we've got this articulating boom out here. That pole is about 110 pounds or so. We're gonna get it about 35 feet up in the air. We're jumping in. I used to take these things up when I worked for the pool rental. So I get the, I get the pole there. <laughs> I don't think there's any burrs in this thing, but got her up, going down. All right, everybody, everything is prepped. Here's the area that the spiral staircase column is going. Right up there to that landing, which is about 12, a little over 12 feet tall. It's the most efficient way to get out there is in a circle. It takes up the least amount of space. So this is the Paragon Spiral Staircase Kit. Everything you see and you need, they include, except for the tools, which you will need a drill, because you're gonna be doing a little bit of drilling into the steel. Uh, impact driver will speed up putting the hex bolts on. Just have a little variety of drill bits. Same thing, you're gonna need some Allen keys, um, some little hex drivers for the bolt. Measuring tape, nice long level so you can make sure the pole the center column is plumb. A pencil, do some markings, and a small level would be beneficial. And as you can see, this is everything they send you. These are obviously the treads right there, so that's what you walk up. And these are the outside balusters right there, so that's what holds the guardrail up. Over here you get all your hardware and the directions right there. And over here you have the landing, so that's what attaches to the landing at the top that you walk out onto, and then finally some guardrails to go around the landing. So we're gonna show you guys how to install this thing. It's not as crazy as you would think. Anyone can do it, so let's get to it. And also I forget the most important part of the entire staircase system is the column, which is up here. So right now, first thing we're gonna do is hand the column down through here into place, put the base plate on, and then we're gonna start going from there. Got that on film. <laughs> it should be tall enough where you can still hold it. Yeah. You can scoot it out. So here we go. That is the center column. So on to our next step. And so the first thing to do once you get your column into the area is you're going to find the base plate in your kit which is right here, it's this little disc with a cup that holds the base of the column. So we're gonna put that into place. And we need to find the lag bolts, your, the largest bolts in the kit that go down into there. I think they're three eighths. Got them, Max has got them there. So that's your lags, they're just giant super thick screws. Now that we have the column and the base plate in the area where we need it, we're going on to the next step, which is putting all of the set screws into the treads. That way you can lock them to the column. So right now, Max is opening up these little bags and each little bag, one bag goes with one tread essentially. So your set screws are these little tiny guys right here. And uh, yeah, that's what holds the tread to the column over there. So what we're doing right now is we're just putting all these set screws into the treads that way they're just prepped and ready to go so what he's doing here you put the little set screw into the tread and you don't want to go too like deep so. to where it's gonna you know stick out to the inside because then it'll affect you being able to put this on yeah. and you gotta do that for all your treads and i believe there's four set screws in each tread so right, we ran into a major problem trying to install these set screws or just have them ready and the issue is there's paint Everything's been painted, so when you try to thread them in, they just stop, and we are putting our body weight into it, and we couldn't even get them to go hardly in at all. Yeah, we're gonna tap down through and clean up these threads. Yep, so Max basically has a tap kit, and we're gonna basically 
essentially re-thread everything. Yeah. So if you get a Paragon Spiral Staircase kit and you can't put the set screws in, that's probably what you're gonna have to do, unfortunately. There's maybe some other solutions. Yeah, but. otherwise it'll feel like they're tightening down and they're not actually tight, which yep. could be a real issue. Yeah, really sketchy, yeah. So, uh, I know we're having to crank on them so hard when the treads are on that column, it would have felt like they were tight and they wouldn't be and then you could fall. All right, so Max here is gonna explain what to do if your set screws will not thread into your tread. Yeah, so basically, like we had said, there's paint down inside here that is making it too tight when you when you try to thread those in. So I've got your basic tap. What size tap was that, Max? 5 16 by 18. There you go. So 5 16 by 18 is the uh, tap size you will need to do this. Just put it in here, let it start to go in on its own because you don't want to make new threads. You just want to clean up the old ones. Just like that. See, now it goes in really nicely. The nice clean threads. Yeah, it spins right in, no problem, no. Yeah, no, no more jamming. And we have to do this to all 15 treads. Max is also tapping the landing right here to make sure we can get the set screws in that. And we also tapped the base plate for the column. That way we can get the set screws in there. So hopefully when you get your spiral staircase kit from these guys, this isn't an issue, but if it is, you're going to need a tap to do that. Max was on the very last thread that he was going to get the paint out of, and this one was not even tapped, so he's having to tap it right now. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He's going to actually make the threads. Pretty wild. So Max is making threads where there should have been threads already, and this is on the landing of all things too. So uh, yeah, if you just make sure to check all all your set screw holes, and if there's no threads at all, you might have to actually thread it. So. Anyway. Okay guys, so our next step is getting this base plate on the base slash bottom of the column right here. So let's take two people. Got it. Woo! Yeah, so obviously you would have one person hold the column while the other person is putting these set screws in. The next step is you need to get all of the treads onto the pole because once you put the landing on, you can't get the treads on. So we're gonna slide these onto it and it takes two people to do this. I just realized all of these treads have to go up there now. Yep, <laughs> up he goes. Right. Okay. Yeah. My thought is if you balance, balance it, this. I'll slide it on and then yeah. we'll do a handoff. <laughs> And the reason you have to get all these treads on first is because when you put the landing on, you can't get any more treads on, so it has to go in this order. So you can see we get all 15 of these treads on. Spaced them opposite of each other so the pole is balanced. Max is up top holding on to the top. And the next step is to get the landing on, which is about 31 inches off of the wooden landing there. So we have to get the bottom of the pole slid over to about 31 inches. So our next step here is we need to get the pole, the column about where it needs to be before we mount the landing, just approximately. So we know that the staircase is 16 inches wide, five feet wide. So the pole is in the middle of that, obviously, which is 30 inches. So it's really simple. You basically just go over to your wall and you're gonna measure 30 inches off that and that's about where it's gonna fall. And once you make your marker where the bottom of the pole needs to be, you're gonna to need to knock it over. It's really heavy, obviously. The poles, the column is about 120 pounds and these treads are probably, what do you think, 25 pounds each? They're not light. Close, yeah. This is approximately 30 inches off the wall to the center of the pipe. So, like I was saying, stairs are 60 inches wide. Half of that is 30 where the pole is. So as long as you're 30 inches off the wall, your treads will be off the wall. You have to make room for the handrails also, but we'll show you guys that in a minute. So our next step is attaching the landing up there just to stabilize everything. And then we'll get the pole, the center pole plumb. So Max is going to be slipping the landing on while I'm holding the pole right here. Hey guys, next up we're gonna install the landing. So you need the lag screws for the landing. They're 3 8 I believe. 
and just a driver to make it go a little faster. <laughs> so the reason I had to do this landing is because the landing that comes with this, I want my door to swing inside of the house because if it swings to the outside, there'll be too much snow. Maybe I can't open the door because of the snow. So I wanted the door to swing inside. So this is only 31 inches wide, the landing. And a door, your standard door, small door is 32 inches. So you would have basically been able to open your door just about, but then you'd have to back down the stairs to go outside. That's so nice. we made this extra landing so it spaces you out and you'll be able to open the door. So now what we're gonna do is push this pole out pretty much vertical and we're going to lag in the landing here with the three lag screws that they provided and the driver to make it go a little faster. And these screws are sinking into, normally they just sink into a wall, but they're sinking into this extra landing that I built. So nothing, nothing out of the usual there. So I'm, I'm holding it down low now. Yeah, that helps. All right, so I wanna show you guys this really quickly. So whatever kind of flooring you're gonna put on top of your plywood, you have to account for that height. So I wanted to go higher, but if you look under the platform, it's such a small lip down here that if you go any higher with the platform, it's gonna miss and you'll be going into the subfloor plywood, which isn't good. You wanna hit this, this floor joist right here, the landing. So um, the screws that Paragon gives you, the screw holes or lag holes are too high. They need to be lower. So we're gonna drill three lag holes right in the edge of the metal down here. And that'll allow a good bite into this floor joist here. So it's nice and safe, sturdy. As you guys can see, we have the new lower hole right there. So now, tell our lag sunk and it's actually hitting the beam now. We'll get the one lag in over here. So before I sink my next one, Max is gonna make sure that it's level, platform's level. And uh, you wanna check it, I guess we'll adjust this one later, but. Yeah, we can adjust that one after, because that's yeah, definitely that's off. Way off. <laughs> Yours is good though. Over there, good yeah. this way, so. All right, we're gonna sink those legs. Looking pretty good. Perfect. Slightly above, sweet, that'll be great. So what we had to do here is put the guardrail on first because it's gonna be too close to the window to drill into later. So if we did that first there. So that's something to yeah, think about if, uh, if your landing is really close to a wall at the top like this is, then you probably want to install your guardrail first while you can. All the lags are in to the landing over here and we'll get it nice and level. So we're gonna set these column screws right here just to make sure this platform stays in place. Press it. Gonna have to at some point. Yep. That's a good point. <laughs> okay, so everything is nice and plumb. The center pole, we're just gonna lag it in at the bottom at the end. But our next step is we're gonna pull up our first tread and get it all lined up. And this is the most difficult tread because you have to calculate the height in between the treads, how much distance is in between the treads. And in order to do that, you basically take the height from the top of your landing down to the floor and divide that by the number of treads you have. And uh, that number is how far your treads need to be apart. So that's what we're setting right now. We're gonna plumb this pole up really quick, get it perfectly plumb now that the landing is locked in. And then we're gonna put our first tread on. Pretty dang good, close enough. So my measurement in between. <laughs> so it is basically 12 foot three from the floor to where Max is in the landing, the top of the landing. If you take 12 foot three and you divide it by 15 treads, that turns out to be nine inches and uh, three sixteenths of an inch. So nine and three sixteenths inches. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna lift this first tread up to Max. I'm gonna get out the tape measure and find nine and three sixteenths inches. And we're gonna make a mark where we need to drill the first screw, that's what's going on. The first tread is supposed to be the most difficult one to do. We're probably about to find out why. Right. Gonna come down pretty good bit, about inch and a quarter so. Okay, we'll let it down a little bit. 
right there. To the owl's a bit. All right, so we measured from here to here, and that was nine and three sixteenths. We get that set in place. Our next step is to attach the first main baluster over here, and we're gonna drill a hole and uh, make sure the end of the stairs out there, the end of the tread is sitting nine and three sixteenths. Same height as this side. So it's nice and level going across. So you guys can see how that gives you some adjustability up and down right there. You guys can see Max just checked that that main baluster is plumb, nice and vertical. And now he's drilling into the platform and this is the only baluster you have to drill a hole for. <laughs> Everything else should run smooth after this. Oh yeah. There we go, and what we did, we just went ahead and cut this block nine and three sixteenths. That way it's just a quick spacer to make sure we get the same height all the way down. So basically, yeah, you keep on just you bring your tread up, set it to the riser height you need, drop your baluster in, and now it's gonna be easy for the rest of oh. the treads. All right, guys, there's a little progress update. We are, what, four treads deep. I would say about 30 minutes in on the treads and uh, we're cruising. Once you get uh, the first one and two and three, it starts really cruising, gets faster with each one. So once we get all the balusters tightened up, then I come over here and just sink all the set screws nice and tight. And uh, it's coming together nicely. So it's been working well as I'll hand Max baluster and he's got some hardware ready to attach everything. I'll rotate the stair over, slide it up until it meets our measuring block right here to show us the riser height, the height in between the treads. And we'll get that level right across the top, best we can. And we're gonna drill. And once it looks nice and level and we get the riser height correct, we'll set some set screws. And we'll recheck it, make sure it still looks good. This it looks good enough, what we do. And then while Max does this top one, I've been trying to beat him to the bottom one. So you take your carriage bolt, you push it through into the baluster, and you put your big flat washer on, and you get a little lock washer you put on, and you put your nut in the end, and then you just crank them into place with the impact driver here. And then we move on to the next one. It's that simple. Max is on the ground. <laughs> it's been bent over for an hour. Oh no, what do you think? I bet it took like 45 minutes, minutes if yeah. not. Like definitely less than an hour so far to get all the way down. We just got uh, four more to go and we'll be up. Let's get that till it's about level. Sink the set screws. Check for level, looks good. Right now you notice we have all these tight. It really makes it ring. Yeah, it's just that much louder. Yeah, you can see nice and uh, flush right there all the way across so that's how you do it instead of doing a measuring tape i'd highly recommend just cutting a piece of wood the measurement you need to have in between your treads save you some time yeah that is tip of the day so if you guys are going to put the staircase together make sure to have an impact driver with the allen head in there with an allen drive yeah for tight yeah that made down. a massive difference so to, instead of using this little allen wrench that, that didn't even come with it we're using that to hand twist it, but that's not the way to go. That and clean the threads up for yep. sure. The one issue we're gonna deal with when you're walking in this door, that's a head whacker right there. Um, probably right, right under six feet, probably five foot 11. So you're gonna have to do a little something there and pat it. All right, and uh, Max just caught, caught this. So before you set your very last stair tread, make sure to set your lags first, because if you set the stair tread, you won't be able to get to the lag that was under it. Do a washer on your lag. There we go. Max, what's our last step here at the end? We gotta cut the final baluster down to be the correct height, so that way the handrail isn't wonky at the very end. So see how it's too tall right now? You gotta be staring at it. I think that's how it should be, and this one's too tall, so you have to trim it down. So since these bolts all land right in the middle here, 
Um, I'm just going to line this up right next to there. Take a tape measure. If you hold it right in the center of that hole on here, on the baluster, and then measure down to the center of the step, it's three inches. So that's how much we need to cut off of the bottom of this to get where we need to be. Kit comes with a base plate for the baluster to sit on the floor and just screw it down into place. It's kind of nice how it all folds up too. Next step. <laughs> Next step. Mount the handrail. So we're gonna take a prep by putting these through here. You just push that bolt through. Yeah, drywall anchor, I think is yeah, what that is. Right. Yeah, it's an anchor. So we're gonna try it this way. I don't know if this is what the instructions say, but. Yeah, they don't say anything. I think we can just pre-drill and then just pop it into place and pre-drill it and we'll, pop yeah. it. we'll be good. So this is the handrail. This is the next step. We're gonna be installing the handrail on top of all these main balusters all the way up. You wanna take that end up and yeah. I'll kind of screw it to you? Yep. Line it up the interior. Yeah. Okay, so we drilled a, a 3 8 hole in the bottom of the rail. But we're going to push that little anchor through now. Okay, we got our first one in here, so I'm going to walk up a couple steps. So Max is going to go ahead and drill into the bottom, and up into the plastic. Then we're going to pop the plastic off and use the bigger drill bit, which is a 13 30 seconds. A 13, 30 seconds bit. Max has a pretty crazy drill bit kit. Yeah. Supposed to be three eighths. We need something slightly larger. the plastic with a bigger piece. That way that wing can fit up in there. Now you're gonna take a bolt, slide it up into the baluster like that, thread it into that wing or anchor, and then that split anchor, you fold it in half, pop it up in the hole. There it goes. All right, and it's inside of it. And just take a screw to tighten it up. So there you go. Yeah. There you go. Bang. All right, on to the next one. <laughs> there we go. And the last one. Pick up, pick up on this one. Is, is tightened. It is. There's our handrail. Pretty cool. Definitely don't want to step off through here. Holy crap. And you can see that five foot diameter is like, that's. It's nice. It's, yeah, it's nice to walk up and down. You don't have to crap, walk up, or walk sideways or anything. It feels, the space feels good. So now we're gonna grab a sawzall. We're gonna cut the bottom and top, put the caps on here, and um, yeah, let's start. There's still some stuff to do. There's all these center balusters I gotta do. Can't stop, won't stop. And about three inches past, we're just gonna saw this thing off. Remember, you can always cut it shorter. You can't make it longer. Fact. Woo. All right, there's that. Oh, almost stepped right over that. <laughs> That's dangerous. I need to get that rail. Like, you need to get that rail. Get your little end cap on. Bam. Best didgeridoo song. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Beautiful morning here. And we're starting today by installing some heat tape from Viber. It's pretty cool stuff. So it's got this thermostat here that senses the temperature and it turns the heating tape on and off, the heat trace. And you basically just wrap this stuff around your pipe. Let me show you a picture of it here. And kind of like that, it'll just wrap around the pipe. And where I'm putting this is the rooftop drain pipe. So this is gonna run down from the rooftop deck drain all the way down to where it sticks out of the house and uh it's going to keep that from freezing that way the roof drain doesn't freeze up and the house doesn't overflow with water from ice damming so let's go put it in so you guys can see the big flat roof with the rooftop deck up there so the drain comes right down through the middle of the house and spits out so i'll show you where and this is where the drain comes out. All the water from the roof, so we're gonna wrap it around this, go into the house with it, and all the way up. So what we're gonna do is start at the top floor, at the top of the pipe, and we're going to feed this cable down the pipe and out of the house. So I'll show you where we're starting right up here. So we're starting 
starting right here. As you can see, the spiral staircase goes up to the rooftop deck. This is the rooftop deck drain. There's already heat tape coming through that and about halfway into the pipe. So we're gonna start right about in there and run right down all the way to the basement there. And for right now, I'm not gonna tape this into place. I'm just kind of loosely placing it up here so it's a placeholder. We're gonna just start running this cable all the way down through all the floors and this will keep the drain from freezing. And I'll come back and tape it all once I get it all the way down to the floor. And you guys can see how I just ran the heat tape. The water is going to be on the very bottom, just kind of dripping, draining down. So I ran the heat tape along the bottom, along the inside edge, and straight down where the water is going to be going down. And uh, now we're going to continue through all the floors. What I'm going to do is go back with some foil bubble insulation and wrap this pipe. That way it traps the heat from the heat tape inside of the pipe. And obviously once the house is finished and warm, I won't have to worry about this freezing inside, but I have to do this now just to make sure it doesn't freeze. And work it on down. And now we're in the living room slash kitchen. And you can see this is like the second floor. There's our pipe coming from the third floor. We're gonna run it on down into the first floor. Now the second floor is run all the way down. Let's go down to the first floor and install it down in the funnel pipe and then out of the house and to the end of the room.